Hey everyone, and welcome to part 7 of my SQLize tutorial series. So in this episode, we're going to be going over setters and getters. And so with SQLize, you can define custom getters and setters for attributes in our models. And what this essentially means is we can customize how our data is displayed to a user when we retrieve it from the database, and also make changes to the data before it is stored in the database. For example, say we want to display the user's username in all caps every time we retrieve it from the database. We can do that with a getter. Or we have, say we have a password field in our table, and whenever a user creates an account with a password, we want to hash it before storing it in the database. We could do that with a setter. And so the first thing I'm going to be going over is getters. And what, of course what we're going to be defining this on is our model definition up here. So let me also minimize this. And to define a getter, we have to use a get function. And so this will be defined on the um, column that we want to get. So I'm going to put it here because what we're going to want to do is retrieve our username in all capitals from the database. So I'm going to do this. And I'm going to specify get just like that, the function get. And just like a JavaScript getter, this function here is automatically called when the field's value is read. So if we do like um, user.username, this is what will be called. And so now let's add some functionality to this method. Specifically, what we're going to do is anytime we retrieve a user's username from the database, let's capitalize it. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a variable called raw value. I'm going to set that to something this dot get data value and then pass that in the key of the column, which is username. So essentially what we are doing here is we are just going to get the raw value from the current user that we are selecting. So this get data value method is the same as just accessing an object's property using dot notation. However, this should only really be used in custom getters with SQLize. You can use it outside of the getter, but it's easier to just access a prop or an object's property by just using the dot syntax. So for example, um, like user dot username, or down here, like where we are actually finding our user wit code, we would just do like um, data dot username, because that's the user we have retrieved. But anyway, the main purpose of this function here is to replace um, getting using using the dot syntax. Because if we called user dot or this dot username from within here, like this, that would cause an infinite loop. But so now we've retrieved our username and put it in raw value. And then what we want to do is we want to return raw value dot to uppercase like this. And so what this will do is get the username that um, we retrieve from the database, and then it'll just capitalize it. So let's see this in action. So we've got our users here. Um, if you can remember, um, we have um, witco right here. So let's retrieve that user, and let's let's see the output. So I'm not going to do that find and count all, but let's just do find one. That will return return the first user, and then let's log data dot username. So node and next.js. And you can see we get witco right here in all capitals. Whereas if we removed this here, so we got rid of this, ran it again, you can see that we don't get it in capitals. So this is what a getter does. And real quickly, I just want to reiter reiterate that um, this does not actually interfere with the data that is placed into our database. It only um, affects how it is displayed initially. So like when we go in here and we do s select all, you can see it's not actually capitalized. But if we select it from here, then it will be because we're retrieving the value. But now, let's say we want to alter our data before it is actually inserted into the table. For this, we would use setters. And as I mentioned earlier, this is great if you want to say hash the password um, that is being stored. And creating a setter is similar to creating a getter. A setter is a set function, so how we have get here. It's a set function that is defined for the one column in the model definition. And we are going to be, actually this is username, so we want to actually do this because we want to alter our password when it's inserted. So let's go in here. And for password, we are going to do set like this. And so what this does is it actually retrieves the value that is being inserted into the table. And that is placed within here as an, as an argument or as a parameter. And then we can alter it the way we want and store the altered value in our database using the method set data value. So we would do something like this, which means the object we've retrieved, and then set data value. And then we pass in the column 
and then the what we want to insert, which is going to be a variable called hash. So this method set data value does take two arguments, and the first is the key of the column that we are adding it to, and the second is the value we want to add to our database. So what we are going to do here is hash the password, so hash this value here that the user entered with the model with the module by uh, bcrypt, and then store the hash password in the database. And so before I go any further, let me just explain what bcrypt is. So bcrypt is a module that helps you hash and salt your passwords. And I'm not going to go too in depth about hashing and password security, as that is not what this course is about, but it is always a good idea to hash and salt your passwords before storing them. Never store your passwords as plain text for obvious reasons, and also don't store encrypted passwords, as encrypted passwords are easily decrypted if someone has a hold of the key used to encrypt the password. What you should do is hash a password. Hashing is great because it is irreversible. The only way to discover what the original password of a hash is is by hashing passwords to see if you get the same hash. However, there are things out there called rainbow tables that have a lot of hashes of common passwords, so this isn't completely foolproof. What you should also do is add salt to your hash. A salt is essentially a randomly generated string you append to your hash that makes it harder to decrypt. But anyway, because this is a, um, a module, bcrypt is a module, let's install it with npm. So we're going to do npm install bcrypt. And I like doing this because this is um, basically will show you a practical use of setters in SQLize. And now let's just require it at the top. So we have these here. Let's do const bcrypt equals require bcrypt like this. And now let's go back down to our setter. Uh, we're going to put that in here. And this is also a good time to mention that currently getters and setters with SQLize do not support asynchronous functions. So we can't use any functions in this method that are asynchronous. So we have to use the synchronous version of bcrypt's methods. And don't worry, because later on in the series, I will be showing you a way around this, and we will be encrypting passwords asynchronously. But for now, just follow along. And so, if you can remember what I said earlier, the first thing we want to do is generate a salt to hash our passwords with. And you can do that. So let's make a variable called salt. You do that with bcrypt and the method get or gen salt, and we have to use the synchronous, if you remember what I said. And then we can pass in an integer 12, which basically means um, the higher it is, the longer it will take to generate the salt, and I believe the more complicated it will be as well. And then what we want to do is we want to hash the user entered password along with the salt. So let's create a variable called hash, and we're going to set that equal to bcrypt.hash sync, because remember we have to use synchronous methods, and we're going to, we want to hash our value and we want to use a, the salt that we generated. And then, of course, we just need to store this in our database. And that's what I'm doing here is hash. Um, we are setting password, and then we are, yeah, set data value, and we are putting the hash in there. And then, just as a side note, when the user wants to log in, we would use um, bcrypt's compare function to compare the stored, hashed, and salted password to the one the user entered. But now, let's create a user. So let's go down here, um, working with our updated table. Let's return user.create, um, pass in, what do we need up here? So if you can remember, we have user ID is automatic, uh, username, we have to supply that. Uh, let's just supply username and password. So username, um, I'll just do wit, because I believe we also have a validation. It has to be between four and six characters. So I'll do wit as the username, didn't specify the key. Username to be wit, and then down here, this is the password that will be encrypted. And let's set that to um, soccer is fun 67 or something like that. Okay, and let's let's log. We're also we're logging the data. Let's also log data dot password. And now uh, not npm, but let's run this. And now you can see actually our password down here. We entered in soccer's fun 67, but when we retrieved it, we get this here. And now if we check in our database, select all from here, let's go down. You can see our password has been completely, it has been hashed and salted. So this is a secure password. So this is of course a good use of setters. For now, let's go back in here. But so just to reiterate, SQLize calls the setter function automatically before even sending any data to the database. The only, database, the only data that the database actually sees is the data that we altered with our setter. So the database only sees this um, hashed password.
And now the next thing we're going to do is combine getters and setters. In other words, you can use both getters and setters for the same field. So here we used a getter on our username and a setter on our password. But of course, we could do both for one field. And a good use for this, for example, is storing users' posts or anything that could potentially be really long in our database. And what we could do is use a setter to compress the data, or in other words, make it smaller before it is inserted into our database. And then we could use a getter to uncompress the data when we retrieve it, which will bring it back to its original form. And as a side note, compression and uncompression is a good thing to do if you store something such as descriptions or posts in your database because you don't want them to take up too much space. In other words, compressing certain data values can improve memory usage. However, most modern databases do do some form of compression automatically. This here is more of an example of what we could do with a getter and setter. But anyway, let's say we have another column in our table called description. So I'm going to go to the bottom here say we have like a user description and let's set the um, type to be data types dot string which you can remember equates to var char 255 and then what we'll want to do is compress it when it is stored in the database and uncompress it when we retrieve it and now to do this compression and uncompression we're going to import a module known as zlib that is used to add compress functionality to our application or in other words make things smaller so let's just install it at first. So npm install zlib. And now let's go to the top and let's require it. So we're going to do const zlib equals require zlib like this. And now let's implement our setter function. So if you can remember how to do that, we're going to go in here and we're just going to pass in set the value that is being inserted like this. And the first thing we're going to do is compress our data with the deflate sync method. And remember that in SQLize, our setters and getters can only work with synchronous functions, which is why we have to use um, the synchronous methods of zlib. But let's create a variable called compressed and set that equal to zlib.deflate sync, and then we're going to pass in the value. And so what deflate sync does is it takes a buffer, which can be a buffer object, a typed array, a data view, array buffer, or string. And of course, what we are passing in is a string because we have data types.string. And then we use the toString method because the output will be a buffer. And what we want it as is text. So we're going to do deflate and then dot to string. And then we're actually going to specify in here base 64. And so we use to string and we pass base 64, which is a type of encoding to turn binary data into text. And so then what we want to do is what we did before, which is set the data value with our set data value method. So we're going to do this, meaning the current object, and we're going to set the data value of description, and we're going to set that to our variable compressed. And now let's work on our getter. So we've made our setter. Now let's add our getter, which does not take an argument. But what we are going to do here is uncompress the data and display the original text. So first, let's just make something called value, and we're going to retrieve our value. If you can remember, we did this earlier. Get data value, and then the column will be description. And of course, get data value, we could do any column. So we could do age. We could use any of them in here and retrieve that value. But we want to do it with description. And so because we want to um, uncompress this now when we show the description to someone, we use the method inflate sync, which is used to decompress a chunk of data. So let's just make a variable called uncompressed and set that equal to zlib dot inflate sync. And then what this takes is a buffer as the first argument. And for us, this buffer is going to be created from the description stored in our database by using the buffer dot from method. So we're going to do buffer dot from and then buffer dot from is used to create a new buffer with the first argument we pass. And we want to create a buffer from our string. So we're going to do value in here, and then we want to encode it as base64 again. So we're just going to do base64. And then finally, we want to return our uncompressed data. So we're just going to return uncompressed like this. And so now let's create a user with the description. Let's, um, let's call this, um, I don't know, wire. Let's change the password to um, soccer pizza. And then we are going to have a description. So 
let's have a description saying this is my description. It could be really long. Save this. And now let's also log out the, the, re, the user that was created. Let's log their description and we'll also check it in the database. So fingers crossed this works, but let's run it. You can see we get a buffer array down here, so we have to still call to string. But let's check real quick in our database, see what it looks like. So you can see that it is in here some weird format. It has been um, compressed. So this has made it smaller. It'll be a combination of the data and also some header information that is gonna be needed to, of course, uncompress it. But so let's go back in here and let's just fix our getter real quick. And so we just forgot to use two strings. So let's just do it here. Let's call two string, which should turn this buffer object into a string. So I don't think we have a unique value on our username or anything. So I think we can just insert the same user Let's do that, and there we go. So now instead of our buffer object, we get, this is my description, it could be really long, but if we check inside here, I um, have to run this again, you can see that that is not the case. It is actually a compressed format that is stored. So let's go back in here. And then the final thing I wanna go over are virtual fields. And so virtual fields are fields that SQLize populates under the hood, but they aren't stored in our database. And a common use of them is to combine different attributes. So say for example, we want to retrieve our username and description combined. We can make a virtual field called about user. And what a virtual field will be, is it just like a regular field? So we'll just do something, we'll make a column called about user, except to make it a virtual field, we use something special for the type. And that is data types dot virtual. And so this data type is what makes the field not have a corresponding column in our table, or in their table in our database. So if we ran this, we won't have a column called about user because of this data type. And then we make use of the getters that we learned about. Specifically, we use a getter to concatenate the username and description. So let's then make our getter method like we usually do. And then we just need to return, um, <laughs> let me do this, Use cool new syntax. I'll do this dot username so it refers to the object, this.username plus, um, or <laughs> for how we don't have to do that with this, and then dollar this dot description. So we're gonna return that. And now let's just find a user and we'll show their about user. So let's do return user dot find one. Let's do a where and let's find one of these because um, I want to do one where we actually have a description inserted. Let's do where the username is wire. Yeah. So where username is equal, is it with a capital W? Because that doesn't matter. Yeah, capital W. So where username equals wire. So return that, and then we're going to log that. And let's actually get rid of this. And let's just log data dot about user. And let's just hope this works. So let's run node index.js. And there you go. So you can see we have wire. And then, so that's the username. And then we have, this is my description. It could be really long. And then if we go into our database and look in here, you can see we don't have a column called about, about user, which means it's been a virtual field. And so of course, these are useful for just displaying custom data that you wanna display. But so this was um, my video on getters and setters and virtual fields with SQLize. In the next video, I believe we're gonna be going more over validation and constraints. So right now we just have that one validation right here on length. We're gonna be showing, I'm gonna be showing you a lot more and also some constraints. So I'll see you in the next video and thank you for watching.